Welcome to my scientifically informed insider look at mental health topics. If you find this video to be interesting or helpful, please like it and subscribe to my channel. Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question asks, is there any way to predict extroversion? So I think what this question is really getting at is, are there early warning signs to extroversion? Now I think this is interesting because extroversion is a personality trait, not a mental disorder. And usually when I see questions about signs and symptoms, the questions are referring to mental disorders or symptoms of mental disorders, not typically personality traits, especially personality traits that would generally be considered socially desirable, like high extroversion. Although high extroversion certainly does have its drawbacks, just like any score on any of the big five personality traits. There is no perfect personality and there is no ideal level of any single personality trait. With that in mind, I can understand why somebody would want to be able to predict extroversion, whether they believe that extroversion is positive or negative in any specific context. On the positive side of extroversion, we see it's associated with things like happiness, success in social environments, being promoted at work, and a number of other positive outcomes. On the negative side, we see that extroversion is associated with grandiose narcissism, loquaciousness, so being overly talkative, substance use, and risk-taking. So the good news in terms of trying to predict extroversion is that it is the most studied of the big five personality traits. Now, when I talk about the big five traits, I remember these through the acronym OCEAN, openness to experience, conscientiousness, extroversion, agreeableness, and eroticism. Each of these five traits have six facets. The six facets of extroversion are warmth, so being friendly and kind, gregariousness, being spontaneous, outgoing, and talkative, assertiveness, being enthusiastic, aggressive, and dominating, activity, this is when somebody has a lot of energy and they always want to be busy, excitement seeking, so being courageous, bold, and adventurous, and positive emotions, so being happy, cheerful, and optimistic. Now the facets on any personality trait, including extroversion, tend to move together but they don't necessarily have to. For example, somebody could be assertive, like dominant, but not be excitement seeking. So they could be high in assertiveness and low in excitement seeking. Personality traits, including extroversion, are thought of as being relatively stable throughout the lifespan. So if somebody is extroverted when they're younger, they will probably continue to be extroverted as they grow older. In terms of where extroversion comes from, like what forms extroversion, we know that about 50% of the variance in extroversion can be explained by genetic influences, which of course leaves 50% being explained by the environment. This is called environmentability. So as I go through the predictors of extroversion, I'm really talking about the environmentability because we really can't do anything about the heritability. Now the difficult part about answering this type of question, like what predicts extroversion, is that we need to find research that follows the same people for a long time. This is called longitudinal research. Now I used a few different articles to put this video together and I'll put the references for all these articles in the description for this video. One of them was based on the National Child Development Study that was launched in 1958. This study attempted to follow over 17,000 individuals from Great Britain who were born during one particular week in March of that year. There were designated follow-ups built into the study, so at certain points, the individuals were given different tests and surveys. Now, of course, as time goes by, the number of people that can be reached, the number of people who would respond to these different questions, diminished. In 2008, when the individuals were 50 years old, we see that just over 8,500 responded, which is actually pretty good considering 50 years went by. Right, So we start with over 17,000 and you end up with over 8,500. That's pretty good for research. Now, as I mentioned, the study looked at a lot of different areas, but this article really focused on early behaviors and how those behaviors related to participants' personalities later on. So the study found that six factors that were measured when the participants were at these various ages were systematically associated with extroversion at age 50. So looking at those six factors, we see social life. This was measured at age seven. So this is whether and how often the children were meeting other children outside their home. We see speech ability. 
measured at age 11, so whether the children had any speech difficulties and what their speech ability was, so how articulate they were. Then we see the frequency of participation in parties during the teenage years. This was measured at age 16, and also measured at this age was the frequency of participation in sports. Then we see optimism, measured at age 33. This one seems fairly obvious because it's actually part of one of the facets of extroversion, positive emotions. And then the last factor that was tied to extroversion was occupational level, and this was measured at age 42. So of all these factors that seem to predict extroversion, the most powerful predictor was actually the attendance of parties at age 16. This item and the sports item were both categorized together as leisure activities. And what's interesting here is how both predict extroversion, but diverge regarding other items. We see that the participation in sports predicted a higher educational level, whereas participation in parties was negatively correlated with educational level. So more participation in parties was connected to a lower educational level. So outside of these factors, does anything else predict extroversion? We see another study on extroversion that I really found fascinating. It dealt with color preference and extroversion. For many years, researchers have studied color preference and linked it to different constructs. And a lot of the time they do this by talking about the categories of colors. For example, we know that people tend to like the color blue more than any other color. Then we move to green and red. The least favorite colors are yellow and brown which makes me wonder if I should consider a different color shirt every now and then, but that's another story. So this particular study really didn't look at the colors categorically, right? So even though that's a popular way to do it, they really didn't do it that way. Now, categorical colors are called dimensions of hue, H-U-E. This study looked at other constructs around color called chroma and lightness. So chroma is sometimes thought of as saturation or intensity, it's referred to as the colorfulness of an object, and lightness is how bright an object is, so the amount of light coming from that object. The argument here, of course, is that any given hue can have a wide range of appearances based on chroma and lightness. A great example of this that was given in the article would be a comparison of olives, limes, and emeralds. They're all green, but they look quite different. Emeralds are more vibrant than olives, they have higher chroma. Limes are lighter than emeralds. They have higher lightness. So all this is very interesting, but you may be wondering, what does all this have to do with extroversion in the first place? Most people can agree that hue, chroma, and lightness are different aspects of color, but does that matter in terms of personality? Well, the theory here is based on what's called cortical arousal, the theory that extroversion and color is connected. So extroverts seek out and have a higher tolerance for high intensity sensory stimuli. We see this demonstrated in terms of auditory factors as well, so sounds. Extroverts are not only less sensitive to white noise, television, and music, but they actively seek out noisy environments. Introverts are, of course, highly sensitive to those sounds and don't seek out noisy environments. They actively avoid those environments. As an introvert, I get tired just thinking about moving toward a noisy environment. Now moving back to the visual factors, we know that extroverts have a higher tolerance for lights. So in taking this with all the other things I talked about here, it really makes sense that they may have certain preferences for color intensity. Now what this article found was that extroversion is related to color preferences along the chroma dimension. The higher the extroversion, the stronger the preference for high chroma colors. Now, interestingly, higher scores of extroversion did not predict decreased liking of low chroma colors. So extroverts like high chroma colors, but they don't dislike low chroma colors. So other than cortical arousal, are there any other reasons why extroverts would like high chroma colors? Well, we're not really sure, but one theory is that they find these colors to be consistent with their personality as it's described verbally. These colors are often described as intense, loud, vibrant, and bold, which of course is how many people would describe those high in extroversion. 
So what can we learn from all these factors that seem to predict extroversion? Well, if you know an articulate individual who, as a teenager, drove their laser blue Corvette from soccer practice to noisy parties while wearing a neon green shirt and flame orange pants, and a few years later they maintained a high level of optimism while working in a kaleidoscope factory and moonlighting as a disco ball designer, you may want to consider the possibility that when they reach age 50, they will probably score high in extroversion. So I know whenever I talk about topics like extroversion, there will be a variety of opinions. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate really interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found this description of extroversion to be interesting. Thanks for watching.